Okay, my name is Linda Hosevar, and um, I was born and raised in Euclid, Ohio. Still live in the Cleveland, Ohio area, not uh, too far away from Euclid. Uh, I live in a suburb now called Willoughby, Ohio. And um, many years ago, a lot of the Slovenian people um, migrated to the city of Euclid. Um, the community has changed a little bit now, but um, there's a big hub of Slovenian music there, and I am actually half Slovenian and half Slovak. And my father, uh, my last name's Hosvar, obviously my father is the Slovenian in the family. And uh, I was raised primarily in a Slovenian household. I, I unfortunately don't know a whole lot about my Slovak heritage. Um, but my dad was a polka musician and played in a polka band for many, many years. And so I heard this polka music every single day in my house, in the car, on the radio. Um, it was just a constant thing, and I think I was the only child in school that was singing Slovenian words and that I didn't even know what they meant, and um, singing all these Slovenian songs and polkas and stuff at school. Um, so that's how I kind of fell in love with the music. My mother taught me to polka dance in the kitchen of our home. And I picked it up really quickly. I mean, I think I was eight years old when she first taught me how to dance. And so when we would go to the band jobs with my dad, my mom would dance with me. And uh, I just really grew to love it even more. And I love dancing, still do today. And um, as I got older, I, I never played anything. And my dad always wanted to teach me the button box because he plays uh, saxophone was his primary instrument, but he plays the half chromatic button accordion and he could play the regular diatonic button accordion. He could play bass guitar and keyboards and stuff like that. So he wanted to teach me um, the button box. And at that time, when you're a young girl in school, it's very not very popular and not a very ladylike thing to do sometimes. So I wasn't too interested in that. Um, I let him talk me into learning how to play the clarinet. So I was uh, in the school band for about seven years, and that was uh, very enjoyable. And that's where I got a lot of my music education, the theory and stuff behind music. Um, Surprisingly, I did not pick the button box up until uh, about 15 years ago. Um, I started a little button box group. Of course, as I got older, I continued to dance and meet polka people and start to go to a lot of the different polka events. And um, that's when I came across some people that were playing button box. And uh, they were some girlfriends of mine, and they wanted me to try to play something. And I said, well, you know, I play clarinet, but I guess there's not a lot of room for that in a button box group so we decided that a good thing for me to learn would be the bass guitar so that's actually what I started with was bass guitar and uh, I went to um, Rudy Krushishnik who's now passed away uh, but he was teaching uh, one of the girls button box and he taught me bass we went for lessons actually together at the same time and uh, I started learning all the button box music that way and I actually ended up forming my own button box group in 1995 and I was the bass player with the group for quite a while, but uh, during that time period, I came across uh, a woman who also was from the Euclid, Ohio area, and uh, she actually taught my dad a little bit of button box at, when it first became popular, and she had one of, a very, one of the very biggest button box groups in the Euclid, Ohio area back in the 70s. And she was a friend of a friend, and we started to talk, and I said, you know, if I were to get a button box just for my just for myself, would you be willing to give me a couple of lessons? And she said, well, I really don't teach anymore, but yeah, you know, because I know your dad, I'll take you on. So long story short, I started going to her, and uh, we ended up doing that for about seven years. And um, I, you know, ended up purchasing the button box that somebody had given me on loan, and it's the one that I still play today, my, my Melodia. And, of course, I have several more now at home in different keys and whatnot. And uh, as the band progressed, uh, some of the members left and um, went, you know, different ways and whatnot. And so I sort of had to make a decision. Uh, was I going to continue to keep the band together? Was I going to try to find other button box players to replace them? Or what was I going to do? And I decided that maybe I could play the button box full time and, you know, get another bass player or something like that. So that's actually what I ended up doing. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. That actually has changed my whole outlook on the band and the music. And uh, so today, 15 years later, I still head up my button box group, which is Magic Buttons. And we've played um, boy, a whole bunch of different places. We've played many, many states in the country. We've done polka cruises. Uh, we play Slovene Fest every year. We've played down um, at the SNPJ in Spring Hill, Florida, of course. Uh, I think we've played there about three or four times. Um, 
we've played in Pittsburgh, we play all around Cleveland, Ohio area, primarily in the summer, we play for a lot of churches and, and uh, church festivals, things like that. Um, it's just it's just a great time. I just have a great time doing it. I love it. I love all the poker people. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, I'm a very proud member of the SMPJ in Cleveland, the Loyalites Lodge, number 158. I've been a member for a very long time of the Loyalites, and uh, I think the SMPJ is a wonderful organization, and uh, people just don't realize how much they have to offer. Uh, the fraternalism is, is such a, it's just an awesome thing. It's great to be a member of SMPJ. Um, so what else can I tell you? <laughs>